And here is the Writer's Almanac for Sunday. It's the 10th of October, 2021. 1938, on this day, the Munich Agreement was signed by Germany, Great Britain, France, and Italy, which ceded part of Czechoslovakia, the part known as Sudetenland, to Germany. Hitler promised that by signing this, he was pledging peace and he would not invade Czechoslovakia further. Six months later, he violated the agreement, and it was the beginning of World War II. It was on this day, 1881, Charles Darwin published his last scientific book. It was a book about worms in which he said there are more than 53,000 worms at work in any given acre of land, and they had turned a rocky field behind his uncle's house into smooth soil over the course of many years. His health was failing, Charles Darwin, and he told a friend he wanted to complete his book on worms before he joined them in the cemetery. It's the birthday of Harold Pinter, London, 1930, best known for his plays, The Birthday Party, and others, plays that often take place in a single room and employ dramatic pauses, which became his trademark. He would note the pauses in the text of the play, either with the word silence or the word pause or just an ellipsis. And it was the pauses that came to be known as Pinteresque, a word that now appears in the Oxford English Dictionary. Harold Pinter grew up during World War II, reading the novels of Virginia Woolf and Dostoevsky, watching American gangster films and British war movies. Went to drama school for two years. A friend asked him to write a play. Pinter said no, it would take six months, but instead it took him four days. That was in 1957, a play called The Room. A producer saw it, asked if he had anything else, and Pinter wrote The Birthday Party, which premiered in 1958. Audiences booed. It got bad reviews. His next play was The Caretaker. It was a success in 1960. And The Birthday Party, the play that was booed, now considered a classic. It's the birthday of the composer Vernon Duke, born Vladimir Dukelsky in Belarus, Russia, 1903. He was a classical musician. The family fled Russia after the revolution. They came to America in steerage, wound up in New York, where he met George Gershwin. They became good friends. Dukelsky played for Gershwin one of his own piano sonatas, and Gershwin said... There's no money in that kind of stuff and no heart in it either. Try to write some real popular tunes. So he did, and he changed his name to Vernon Duke and wrote some hits in the 1930s, April in Paris, Autumn in New York, and Taking a Chance on Love. Vernon Duke, who said every dogma has its day, but good music lives forever. Here's a poem for today by Robert Bly, looking at cloud banks below the plain window. Hills of cloud, mountains of mist below, what are they? Troll heads, tufts of forgetfulness, childhood stories, dreams of someone's death. Perhaps a burbling up of blind affection. The clouds are affectionate creatures with their backs turned to us, crouching over a smiling landscape beneath. How different these toughy bodies are from ours. They're secretive, but do not cling, are not afraid of a storm willing to dissipate in the wind. A poem by Robert Bly looking at cloud banks below the plain window from his collection Like the New Moon, I Will Live My Life, published by White Pine Press and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac.